Luna here and uh, this is this week's YouTube Pagan Challenge video for week four and the question for this week is what is your take on the Wheel of the Year? Now I celebrate the Celtic Wheel of the Year which is the eight major Sabbaths and um, that is Imolk which is coming up February 2nd Ostara, which is around March 21st, Beltane, which is May 1st, Letha, which is around June 21st, Lamas, which is July 31st, August 1st, Maban, which is around September 21st, 22nd, around there, Soen, which is November 1st, and Yule, which is uh, December 21st. And Ostara, Letha, Mabon, and Yule are the equinoxes and the solstices. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. So, when I was 16, I went to my first festival. And it was for Beltane. They had a maypole and everything. And I went without my mom knowing. The only way, it was at, uh, one of the open circles on Fort Hood, and the only way you could get in was with a parent's permission, if of course you were under the age of 18. So I lied, I went with my friend Lewis, and we pretended to be step-siblings, and that his dad was my stepdad, and since he took us there and was like, these are my children, yes they can attend, they didn't think twice about it or anything. So I was able to participate in the ritual. He dropped us off and we just had, it was a fun time. Um, we laughed at the maypole because of course people got confused which way we were going. Um, and somebody was yelling in the background, in, out, in, out. And of course it's, um, one of the fertility rituals, so <laughs> we were cracking up the entire time she was yelling in and out. I'm like, this sounds a bit dirty and we have children are present. But it was a great opportunity to learn more. I mean, literally it was my very first festival. It was a great opportunity to learn more about the meaning and everything and, and what it meant to everyone who was participating. And I haven't gone to an actual ritual like that or a festival or anything since. While I have had rituals that I've had in groups with friends and um, and other circles, nothing as <coughs> as profound as my first experience on Beltane. Nothing as well organized, I guess I should say, besides Pagan Pride Day that I went to in 2013. Um, so for me, when I first started, they were really important. Like I needed to celebrate these things because it was part of my practice. Um, as I got older, they became less important because I had a child and I had to focus more on my child's needs than my own needs more, more times than not. But um, Imolk, which is coming up here in like a week. Let me check my calendar. Yeah, in a week. It's next next Tuesday. It's coming up here. Um, when I moved, living in the South, we really don't have <laughs> what is known as seasons. It's either cold or hot. That's pretty much it. You can see some, some of the changes during the seasons if you pay really close attention, but most of the time it's just cold or hot. When I moved to Nebraska, when I got married, and I moved to Nebraska, I do remember using the snow for Imolk as a symbol for cleansing and renewal. And I don't know, since being in, in Nebraska, Nebraska there's, there's more seasons than just hot and cold. Um, 
and in Iowa because I lived in Iowa, which is right next door for lack of a better term. So the seasons were a bit more important to me and I felt more in tune with the Sabbaths that way because I had something physical to focus on. Um, for me, like I said, in the beginning they were very important for me because I see it as the mother goddess and the father god and the child as they're growing through stages and everything. Um, now that the son has been refor uh, reborn, I see her, you know, she's, she's had a few months to recover, for lack of a better term, and it's time to, to grow and create. I see it as a time to, I see this more as the new year than the Gregorian calendar. This is, for me, this is the time to create and bring something new about because now is when winter is ending and and um, spring is beginning. So I know it's different in the southern hemisphere. Obviously, I'm in the northern hemisphere. I live in the United States, so I know it's different in the southern hemisphere because the seasons are reversed. So. For me, anyway, Imolk meant um, renewal, and I'll talk about that in the next week's video, which is about what we think about this time of season. So, I I like ritual. I don't like doing ritual by myself, which is kind of funny because I'm a solitary. But I enjoy if I could if I could join festivals and festivities. I love it because it brings camaraderie and a sense of community and you're celebrating something that is special to you that you hold close to you because that is your connection with deity um, I celebrate around the date I don't celebrate like on this date like February 2nd is Imolk no I'll probably celebrate it on Monday because on Mondays I don't have school I don't have uh, my kids on Mondays. I don't have school. I have nothing to do. So Monday I'll have my, my own personal celebration for Imolk, for example. So mine is just around that date. For Lamas, for Lunasad and Lamas, my daughter was born July 31st. So I always celebrate the day after because the 31st is her birthday and I focus that day on her. Um, so I celebrate it when it's convenient, <laughs> so it's, it becomes more personal for me. Um, I don't think the celebrations are super, it, it's, it may be important for you. It may be important for the next person. It may be important for somebody's practice. For me personally, they're not super important, but I do feel like they do encourage a connection with divinity because you're... They encourage growth and renewal and death. Like some people think, oh, well, nobody wants death. No one wants bad things to happen or something. But some things need to be discarded because they're of no use. So I see that as a way of change. Because it's the entire process is just change. So I see it as I see it as a way of learning to grow. To become better, to change, to go with the flow. Like I said, it's really different here in the South because, again, we only have hot and cold. But when I do remember a certain celebration, I it seems like I pay more attention to my surroundings, more attention to nature. Like, um, like with Emil coming up, I'm paying more. Yes, while we don't have any slow, snow here in Texas. Um, here in central Texas anyway. It did snow at one point up in northern Texas. Um, we don't have any snow here in central Texas. We um, we do have a lot of cold. <laughs> so I just pay more attention to 
how the weather is changing, how it's affecting me, how it's affecting my mood, what am I going to do to create the change into spring. Because once, for me, you know, Ostara, Ostara is mid-spring, technically. While it's considered the first day of spring, I see it as already mid-spring. I see more Imolk as the starting of spring, because now is when the snow is beginning to melt for most places. The blizzard just hit in the East Coast, so... <laughs> so, yeah, about that. Um, but again, for me, changes are happening. Um... Anyway, I, th I think that's pretty much it. I'm about to start rambling, and this is not about rambles. But for me, I think celebrating is a very personal decision. Um, it's a very personal experience. So if it's important to you, go for it. If it's not important to you, it, then it's not. It's not something you have to celebrate. Um, there are other pagan celebrations that have nothing to do with the Celtic Wheel of the Year. Um... But for me, it's, it's a nice way to connect to divinity and acknowledge the change within us as well as our surroundings. So anyway, that's my video for this week. You guys have a good night. Brightest blessings.